the first process that comes to mind when we talk about ATP production in cells is glycolysis. And what is glycolysis? Quite literally, it is the splitting up of glucose. Glyco stands for glucose and lysis means splitting up. Glucose being a 6 carbon compound is split into two 3 carbon compounds. And what is a 3 carbon compound? That is pyruvate or pyruvic acid. So the process of glycolysis involves splitting up of this 6 carbon compound into two 3 carbon compounds. In the process, energy in the form of ATP and electron carriers or NADH are also produced. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the overview of glycolysis and the enzymes involved in the process. So before we begin with the process of glycolysis, it's good to know that there are two phases in glycolysis. The first phase is an investment phase where ATP is utilized. The next phase is the payoff phase where ATP is generated. So because we are using ATP, some ATP to generate more ATP, there is always a net amount of ATP produced in the process of glycolysis. We will calculate that at the end of the video as well. So the first phase begins with glucose. The enzyme hexokinase acts on glucose and being a kinase, it is involved in the transfer of a phosphate group so with the help of energy. ATP, where ATP is converted to ADP and inorganic phosphate, hexokinase adds this phosphate group to glucose, converting it to the molecule glucose 6-phosphate. So glucose 6-phosphate is still a 6-carbon compound. We are starting with glucose which is a 6-carbon compound. Glucose 6-phosphate is still a 6-carbon compound. It just has a phosphate group attached at the 6th carbon position. The next step involves this enzyme phosphoglucoisomerase. And being an isomerase, it converts glucose 6-phosphate into its isomer which is fructose 6-phosphate. Isomers as you remember are molecules with the same molecular formula, just a different structure. So because this fructose 6-phosphate is an isomer of glucose 6-phosphate, that is also still a 6-carbon molecule. The next step involves converting this fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bis-phosphate. Bis means 2 and the enzyme phosphofructokinase catalyzes this reaction. Where does the additional phosphate group come from? From the ATP. So ATP is hydrolyzed to give ADP and inorganic phosphate and that inorganic phosphate is added to the fructose 6-phosphate giving fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So these processes where two molecules of ATP are used make up the investment stage of glycolysis. So the investment stage starts with glucose being converted to glucose 6-phosphate and then ends with the production of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is still a 6-carbon molecule and it is here with the help of this enzyme known as aldolase where this 6-carbon fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is converted to 2 3 carbon molecules. So one of this 3 carbon molecule is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate G3P or it is also called P-gal and the other is dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP. So these two compounds, these two 3 carbon compounds are isomers of one another. So there is an isomerase enzyme involved here that keeps converting whatever DHAP produced to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Why? Because it is G3P that is capable of proceeding with the glycolysis process. So more and more DHAP is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So essentially we are left with two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate from one molecule of glucose. So the two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate are converted to two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid. So again 1,3-bisphospho means there is an other phosphate group being added to this molecule. Where does that phosphate group come from? Well in this process NAD plus and inorganic phosphate uh, react and NADH is produced and the inorganic phosphate is added to G3P producing 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid. 
This entire process is catalyzed by this enzyme G3P dehydrogenase. So from two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, two molecules of NADH are produced and two molecules of 1,3 bisphosphoglyceric acid is also produced. So this 1,3 bisphosphoglyceric acid now has two phosphate groups, this 3 carbon molecule. The enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase, again there is a kinase involved. It takes one of this phosphate groups, adds it with ADP and converts ADP to ATP or energy. So from two molecules of 1,3 bisphosphoglyceric acid, we get two molecules of ATP. So this phase where ATP and NADH for that matter is produced, that is the payoff phase. So we are now in the payoff phase of glycolysis. So we have two molecules of ATP being generated and because one of this phosphate group is removed, the resultant product formed at the end of this reaction is 3-phosphoglyceric acid, two molecules of 3-phosphoglyceric acid. The enzyme phosphoglyceromutase converts 3-phosphoglyceric acid to 2-phosphoglycerate. So what is essentially happening is the position of the phosphate group is being changed. Initially it is attached to the third carbon here but then it is attached to the second carbon here with the help of this enzyme mutase. So from two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate acid, two molecules of 2-phosphoglycerate are formed. 2-phosphoglycerate is converted to two molecules of 2-phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP with the help of this enzyme known as enolase. This enolase which is also known as a hydratase enzyme is involved in the production of water as well. So when this 2-phosphoglycerate uh, is converted to 2-phosphoenol pyruvate, two molecules of water are also released. Try to remember where you've learnt about this PEP before. So the last step in the glycolysis process involves converting this two molecules of 2-phosphoenol pyruvate to two molecules of pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Another kinase enzyme, the pyruvate kinase enzyme is involved. So what this enzyme basically does is that it removes the phosphate group from phosphoenol pyruvate, adds it to ADP and converts it to ATP. So two molecules of ATP are produced here as well. And the resultant 3 carbon molecule that is formed is pyruvate or pyruvic acid. So we started off with a 6 carbon molecule which is glucose and we are ending up with a 3 carbon molecule which is pyruvate. In the process we have utilized 2 ATPs here and here but we have also produced 2 NADH and 4 ATP, 2 here and 2 here. So now what happens to this pyruvate after it is produced? Well, that depends on whether oxygen is present or not. If oxygen is not present, then pyruvate undergoes fermentation as is seen in anaerobes. Sometimes even in our muscle cells when there is no oxygen but we are exercising too much, that time as well pyruvate is fermented to yield lactic acid or in a lot of bacteria and yeasts and all ethanol or alcohol. But if oxygen is present then pyruvate is oxidated in a pyruvate oxidation process. It is then converted to acetyl-CoA which enters the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. The products of the Krebs cycle uh, move on to the electron transport chain where with the help of oxidative phosphorylation more ATP is produced. Fermentation also yields ATP but the amount of ATP produced as a result of fermentation is much less compared to ATP produced as a result of oxidative phosphorylation. So that is the fate of pyruvate or pyruvic acid. Now let's move on to calculating the balance sheet of glycolysis. So here we have an investment phase and the payoff phase. So in the investment phase, we used two ATPs, right? One here and one here. So ATP in is two. In the payoff phase, we produced two ATP here and two ATP here. So the ATP out at the end of the payoff phase is four. 
So for the total calculation or the net calculation of ATP, we're going to do ATP out minus in. That will give you 4 minus 2, which is net of 2 ATP. So glycolysis produces a net of 2 ATP molecules. And the entire reaction of glycolysis looks something like this. So we start off with a 6 carbon compound, which is glucose. With the help of two molecules of NAD plus and two ADP. Why just two? Because we are just calculating the net ATP. So with the help of two ADP, we get two pyruvates, which is the three carbon compound, two molecules of NADH, two molecules of ATP and two molecules of water. This is the overall reaction of glycolysis.